Whether an operator is being trained to operate one type of truck or multiple types of trucks, there are certain basic fundamentals that the operator must learn about all lift trucks. Topics such as the difference between a lift truck and an automobile, vehicle stability, and steering principles are universal to all types of trucks. OSHA standards require that the formal training provide coverage on these basic fundamentals. Prior to viewing the training video that pertains to specific classes of trucks, we highly recommend that operators view the segment of the video titled OSHA Mandatory Lift Truck Overview. Class 3 electric motorized hand trucks are designed for use in dry applications with smooth hard floors and minimum grades. Applications include general warehousing and the grocery industry. And because they're electric, they can be used in exhaust-free areas, such as refrigerated or freezer storage plants. Motorized hand trucks can be operated by walking or riding, depending on the model and the application. Trucks in Class 3 include low-lift pallet walkie and walkie riders, high-lift reach walkies, high-lift straddle walkies, and tuggers. Walkie and walkie riders are designed to be operated with the load trailing the operator, like a wagon. High-lift models are designed to work in rack areas in place of counterbalance or narrow-aisle trucks. A large battery or battery pack powers all Class 3 trucks, supplying power to the traction and hydraulic motors. Each facility has unique guidelines for battery charging. Refer to the operating manual that comes with the truck and talk to your supervisor for your company's policy on these procedures. Class 3 trucks are operated by a control handle. Handles vary by make and model but they generally have a lifting button, a lowering button, a horn, a speed and directional control, and a reversing switch. When pushed, this button reverses the direction of the truck, helping to protect the operator from being pinned between the truck and a wall or load. Some rider models also have a high speed switch, which is used to increase speed when traveling long distances only engage it when standing in the operator's area. Gauges include a battery indicator hour meter or separate battery indicator and hour meter. High lift models are equipped with masts of different heights. Mounted on the front of the mast are the forks and carriage. The carriage has a load backrest to help stabilize the load. Always check the nameplate for your truck's rated lifting capacity. Walkie straddle high lift trucks have outriggers to stabilize the load. Walkie reach trucks have a reach mechanism and also have outriggers to stabilize the load. Unlike rider trucks, walkie trucks don't have overhead guards. On class three trucks, the brake is applied by raising the control handle all the way up or down. Some rider models have hand-controlled brakes. The preferred method for controlled braking on most walkie and walkie rider trucks is plugging. Plugging is moving the directional control in the opposite direction of the truck's travel. This brings the truck to a stop before moving in the opposite direction. Refer to the truck's operating manual for more detailed information on plugging. If you are new to plugging, make sure you practice it before you handle loads. When operating Class 3 trucks, you must follow basic safety rules. Remember to read the truck's operating manual, check the truck's nameplate, and make a complete inspection of the truck before operating it. And speaking of inspections, there are a number of major checks you must do before operating your truck. Check for leaks. Do a full walk around, looking underneath the truck. Make sure the key is off. Check the motor compartment and clean out any debris. 
check all hydraulic connections. On masted walkies, before checking the mast, make sure the carriage and channels are lowered and that the truck is turned off and the key removed. Check the carriage, chains, mast, load backrest, and hoses. Look for excessively worn or damaged parts. Pay special attention to the pins and anchors on the chains and forks. Check the forks for cracks and excessive wear. Refer to your operating manual for more detailed information on fork inspection. Look for chunking and rubber separation on the load and drive wheels. Check to see if any nails or wire has become embedded in the wheels. And check that shrink wrap, banding, or string has not become wound around the axle. Inspect the battery and connectors. Look for damage, corrosion, or loose connections. Make sure the battery is secured properly in place within the battery compartment. If the truck fails any part of the inspection, tag it, remove the key, and immediately report the problem to your supervisor. Never attempt to fix a problem yourself. Repairs must be carried out by trained service personnel. As a lift truck operator, there are several things you must do following the pre-shift inspection and before operating a lift truck. First, make sure the weight of the load does not exceed the truck's rated lifting capacity, as specified on the nameplate. Second, check the type, size, and shape of the load. Make sure the load is stable and won't shift when moved. In addition to damaging product, an unstable load can fall and injure you or a coworker. If the load is too tall or may become unstable when traveling, repack the load and rewrap with shrink wrap or banding. If you are still unsure about the load, see your supervisor. And third, make sure the floor is safe for traveling. Motorized hand trucks are designed for smooth, hard floors with very slight grades. Now let's look at how to operate these trucks. As with any lift truck, always familiarize yourself with its controls. Turn the key and lower the steering braking handle. This will release the brake. To move the truck forks first, use your thumb and rotate the directional control switch on the handle away from you. To move the truck towards you, rotate the directional control towards you. The more you rotate this control, the faster the truck will go. Remember, rotate the control in the same direction you want the truck to go. When operating a truck with the forks trailing, to turn to the right, swing the steer handle to the right. To turn left, swing the steer handle to the left. Always check for pedestrians and other trucks. On motorized hand trucks, the brake is applied whenever the handle is in the full up or full down position. Walkie trucks should be walked in the direction of highest visibility, which is normally with the load behind you and your arm slightly bent. You should always walk to the side of the truck. This is important because if you have to stop suddenly, your arm will naturally move the steering braking arm to the full up or down position, causing the truck to stop. Always bring the truck to a full stop before taking your hands off the control handle. Loaded motorized walkie and walkie rider hand trucks travel with the forks in the up position. Remember to travel in the direction of the highest visibility. When traveling with a masted walkie without a load, make sure the mast is fully lowered and travel with the forks about four inches from the ground. Never travel faster than normal walking speed. Always travel with one hand on the controls and walk ahead and to the side of the truck with the load trailing. Operate your masted walkie slowly when turning. Unlike sit-down counterbalance and stand-up narrow-aisle trucks that steer from the rear, low-lift and masted walkie and walkie riders steer from the front, like an automobile. With the load trailing, you have to be aware of turning corners too sharply or front-end swing. 
While operating with the load leading and turning to place or remove a load, you must also be aware of tail swing, which is the swift movement outward of the opposite end of the truck. As we mentioned earlier, some rider trucks have a high speed switch. Be especially careful at high speeds because you will need more room to stop. And if you take corners too fast, the truck or load can tip over. Some walkie rider trucks are equipped with a coast control feature to facilitate order picking. With this feature, the truck will coast a few feet before it stops. Only use the coast control when you are operating from a walking position. You have to be especially careful when using this feature because the brake is not applied immediately, but is applied after the truck coasts a few feet. When using the coast control, make sure it is used only on a level surface, free of debris. You should not allow the truck to coast into a cross aisle or be used in pedestrian walkways. Make sure you walk to the side of the coasting truck. When picking up a load from ground level with a low lift walkie, line your truck up with the center of the load and approach it straight on. Slowly move forward until the load is against the load backrest and the front wheels are not on the pallet support but free to lift the pallet. The forks must be at least two thirds the length of the load. Lift the load. Make sure the load is stabilized. Check for pedestrians and potential hazards before traveling. When picking up a load from the ground with a masted walkie, line your truck up with the center of the load and approach it straight on. Position the forks so they move safely under the load. Move forward until the load is against the load backrest. If your truck is equipped with a reach mechanism, extend the forks into the pallet until the load is against the load backrest. Remember, the forks must support at least two thirds the length of the load. Lift the load four to six inches off the ground. If the truck has a reach mechanism that has been extended, make sure the reach is retracted and the load is stabilized. Check for pedestrians and potential hazards before traveling. When placing a load on the floor with a masted walkie, first, Come to a complete stop, then slowly lower the load. If your truck is equipped with a reach mechanism, extend it to place the load. Once the load is in position, continue lowering the forks until the pallet is on the ground. The forks must be low enough to clear the load without catching on the pallet as they are being pulled out. Then retract the extend mechanism. To remove a load from a high stack or rack with a masted walkie, first stop directly in front of the stack, make sure the forks are lined up with the stack. The forks should be spread so that they are as far apart as possible for the load you're about to lift. When spreading the forks, always push the forks away from you, not towards you. Raise the mast until the forks can safely enter the pallet. Move forward until the load is against the load backrest. The forks must support at least two thirds the length of the load. Make sure the load is stable before you attempt to lift it. If the truck has a reach mechanism, retract it. If the forks are longer than the load's length, inch forward until the fork tips are even with the back edge of the load. Lift the load. Look behind you and back out until the load clears the rack or stack. Then lower the load six to eight inches above the floor. Check behind you and always travel in the direction of greatest visibility. Moving with an elevated load is very dangerous, so make sure you lower the load as soon as you clear the rack or stack. Make sure not to turn the truck while the forks are raised. Always operate with one hand on the controls and walk ahead and to the side of the handle when traveling forward with the load trailing. To place the load on a rack or stack with a masted walkie, approach the rack carefully. Raise the load just above the top of the rack or stack and then move forward slowly until the load is lined up over the rack or stack. If your truck is equipped with a reach mechanism, 
extend it. Lower the forks until the load is in position on the rack or stack. Lower the forks slightly so that you can back up without the forks catching on the load. If the truck has a reach mechanism, retract it. Look in reverse for pedestrians and potential hazards, then back out carefully to clear the rack. Lower the forks, then proceed at a safe speed with the lift mechanism trailing. Let's now go over some important safety rules to follow when operating Class 3 lift trucks. Motorized hand trucks are designed for use on hard, smooth floors such as concrete and on very low grades. They are not intended for operation on grades greater than 10%. So ask your supervisor about grades before traveling on them. Check your operating manual to see if your motorized hand truck can be operated on ramps and inclines. You should never attempt to turn your truck on a ramp or incline. The center of gravity can be moved outside the stability triangle and the truck may tip over. Always approach an intersection or cross aisle slowly, keeping an eye out for pedestrians and other trucks. Come to a complete stop and look both ways. Sound the horn and then proceed with caution at a slow travel speed, always maintaining a safe distance between the lift truck and pedestrians and other vehicles. You should also check with your supervisor or company safety director for additional safety procedures for your facility. You may, on occasion, load or unload a trailer or rail car with a motorized hand truck. If so, there are additional safety precautions you must be aware of. Make sure the highway truck, trailer, or rail car is secure. This means that the operator should check to make sure the highway truck or trailer brakes are applied and that the wheels are chocked to prevent any movement of the truck or trailer. Fixed jacks may be necessary to support the front and rear of the trailer to prevent it from tipping during loading or unloading. Some trailers are designed with built-in stabilizers. It's important that you make sure the trailer being loaded or unloaded is properly supported and secured before entering it with a lift truck. This is especially important if the trailer has been disconnected from the highway truck. Rail cars should be disconnected from the engine and brakes set. Make sure that the dock and trailer floors are level enough to allow the truck to enter and exit the trailer without interference. Then check that the trailer floor is strong enough to bear the weight of the loaded lift truck. Check for cracks, brakes, and weak spots. Make sure the dock board is secured and in good working condition. Also check that the dock board capacity can support the lift truck and its load. If operating a high lift walkie, make sure the trailer or rail car is tall enough to allow for the height of the mast. If the mast on your truck is not equipped with free lift capabilities, you must be especially careful. Although the trailer may be tall enough to accommodate the mast when it is down, you'll have to make sure that the mast does not begin to extend into the top of the trailer or rail car when raising the fort. Here are some guidelines when working in a freight elevator. One, know the combined weight of your truck and the load and do not exceed the elevator's capacity. Two, never allow pedestrians in the elevator when you enter or leave with the truck. Three, enter slowly. Four, position the truck in the center of the elevator. Five, fully lower the load. Six, turn off the power. Seven, set the parking brake. And eight, when using a motorized hand truck, drive into the elevator, load first. If the lift truck is used to elevate anyone other than the operator, you must use an approved safety platform. The platform must be equipped with safety railings, a solid floor, and a screen or bars separating the platform and the moving parts of the mast. Be sure the platform is secured to the lift truck. Lift and lower the carriage slowly with the platform attached 
to make sure the mast is functioning properly. Before allowing anyone to get on the platform, apply the parking brake. The operator must remain at the controls. Before concluding this portion of our program, let's briefly go over a few parking procedures. When parking, bring the truck to a complete stop. If you are operating a high lift walkie, fully lower the carriage and forks. If the truck is equipped with the tilt function, tilt the mast forward until the tips of the forks touch the ground. If it has a reach attachment, make sure the forks are retracted. Make sure the controls are in the neutral position and return the handle to the vertical position to apply the brake. Turn the key to the off position and remove the key. Never park your lift truck so that it limits access to fire aisles, stairways, and fire equipment. If you are parking a high lift reach or straddle truck,